Far from the periphery of European tourism, in a back corner of the world's longest chain of its tiniest islands, is the nation of Palau, which is sort of an independent country and sort of a U.S. protectorate, with a history of being that one place every colonizing force in world history likes the idea of owning, but never really fully committed to colonizing. So what is it about this island country that has evaded full-scale colonization, and why does it have a quasi-dependency on the United States? Join me as we virtually travel across the globe to learn more about the Republic of Palau. Palau's earliest settlers arrived on the island 3,000 years ago. What's even weirder was that if it weren't for a chance encounter between a Czech missionary in the Philippines and a group of Palauan shipwrecked fishermen in the 1600s, Europeans may never have found the islands at all. In all that time before contact, Palauans had lived on the islands in relatively small numbers as the descendants of coastal Southeast Asians who settled Palau sometime between the 3rd and 2nd millennium BCE. Residency before contact involved building terraces out of the volcanic hillsides of the islands, at least those islands that were large enough to sustain village clusters. They likely did not practice large-scale agriculture even by oceanic definitions due to the limited space on the islands, but Palauans relied heavily on the sea for sustenance, as evidence from Shilmiden left over from the remains of seafood feasts. A Spanish exploratory ship spotted two of the islands in the 16th century, but its sailors made no contact with residents of the islands before sailing off to continue their voyage. Nearly a century later, a Czech missionary, Paul Klein, spoke with shipwrecked fishermen in the Philippines who claimed to have come from a chain of islands not too far from the Philippines and described their home to the missionary who drew a map of the islands based on the description the fishermen gave him. That map and news of the islands featured on it caused a stir back in Europe, especially among the Spanish, who immediately claimed the islands as theirs. Spanish Jesuits dispatched from the Philippines landed in the islands in the early 1700s to stake their claim to the region and began converting the populace to Christianity. But several storms at sea forced the Spanish back. Instead, the Spanish settled for making the unreachable islands part of their Philippines colony. Things got a little complicated when the Philippines declared independence from Spain and labeled Palau, known at the time as Palaus, which came with having one representative to the independent Filipino Congress. I can't even imagine how weird that would have been for the Palauans. This is a country of basically uncontacted people who get a message from some islanders across the sea that they've just declared independence from those weird guys with beards who kept getting shipwrecked by storms at sea, and that we get to send someone to represent our islands and their government. Like, what? <laughs> well, Palau functioned as a frontier island chain for the Philippines for about a hundred years, before Spain claimed the islands were actually part of the Carolin Islands, and were therefore still part of the Spanish Empire, before selling the islands to Germany in 1899. But boy, did that not last long. After World War I, Japan's mostly forgotten exploits of the war included capturing German holdings in the Pacific and negotiated a transfer of colonialism from Palau to being under the Empire of the Rising Sun. Out of all of Palau's colonial rulers, Japan was probably the one who invested the most in the country, Largely because they actually showed up. Japanese control including introducing their language to the islands, but it mostly involved turning the islands into fortresses, complete with landing strips for military aircraft. That's why the islands became a major battleground in the Second World War, 
when U.S. forces captured the islands and kicked out the Japanese. Palau, Micronesia, and the Marshall Islands fell under U.S. military control for about two decades before gaining formal independence in the 1970s, but continued to function as a system called the Compact of Free Association, which places the country under the military protection of the United States. Speaking of international politics, Palau functions as an independent country with its own president and congress, but their capital building is evidence of international influence. The Palau capital almost exactly resembles the U.S. Capitol building, and it's a great metaphor for how the U.S. flexes its influence over the country via the Compact of Free Association. At its core, Palau, along with the Federated States of Micronesia and the Marshall Islands, are independent countries but are under U.S. military protection. The U.S. dollar functions as the local currency, and Palauan citizens have the right to travel freely around the United States. Palau also has maintained strong relations with Japan. In fact, Palau is the only country outside of Japan to have Japanese as an official language, but it's only one of several official languages. Palau also maintains strong ties with the Philippines as well as nearby Taiwan. Palau consists of 16 states covering one main archipelago of islands, including the most populated islands of Angaur, Babeldaub, Koror, and Peleliu, along with several hundred rocky islets and a remote set of six islands to the southwest. Two-thirds of the population lives on the island of Koror, with the rest of the country's residents living on the remaining islands in small numbers. Palau's low population has made it a beacon for nature tourism, which makes up the bulk of the country's revenue. Outside of the dominating industry of tourism, the next biggest source of revenue also comes from nature in the form of the fishing industry, which accounts for over half of the country's exports. Travel around the country depends largely on small craft airplanes and island ferries that bring people island to island, but a few of the more populated islands do have roads. The vast majority of the population identify as Palauan, an ethnic group associated with the Micronesian language family, at about 73%. Other ethnic groups in the country include Filipinos, East Asians like Chinese, Koreans, and Japanese, and a small percentage of islanders who identify as American. The official languages of the country include Palauan and English across the country, Sonsorolese and Tobian on the islands of Sonsorol and Hatahobe, respectively, and Japanese in the state of Angaur. Religiously, most islanders are Christian, with about 45% identifying as Catholic and 39% as Protestant. 6% identify with the local religion of Monegi, definitely pronounced that wrong, and 3% identify as Muslim. A small number of Palauans identify as Jewish, but it must be large enough to notice because the country has sent two athletes to the Maccabea Games, a sort of Olympic Games for Jewish athletes from around the world. Like with Judaism, Palauan culture is matrilineal, so titles pass from the mother, not from the father. Women have a strong role in Palauan culture as the result of the matrilineal system, including overseeing marriage, funerals, and inheritance. Palauan cuisine typically includes some form of seafood or pork and yarrow, sweet potato, or yams, but Japanese and American cuisine feature heavily in the islands. Indigenous governments, which include a few small-scale monarchies, still have a big impact on national politics, especially in the frontier states of the Southwest. Palau is one of the least populated countries in the world, which might be why it's not on most people's world travel bucket lists. But it's kind of a shame. The country has a sophisticated wilderness protection system, especially for shark conservation. It partners with Japan and the United States to promote tourism, and it has some pretty great local cuisine. 
If you liked this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to see more anthropological content. Also, let us know in the comments below what Micronesian culture you would like to learn about next.